Hello and welcome back. On today's episode we're going to take a look at a Dolch Pack 486 computer. This computer was a gift from a friend in Bucharest back in 2016 and it was laying around in my storage since then. Back in 2016 the computer booted just fine from its drive, now I think the drive is dead, as the drive doesn't spin up anymore. This luggable dates from 1995 and it's in very good shape. It runs at 100 MHz, has an astonishing 8 MB of RAM, which I want to upgrade by the way, and has a very nice crisp display. This configuration had a $13,000 price tag back in the 90s and it was built for industrial environments. Let's see what kind of connectivity this machine has. On the left side we have some ports. I can see a PS2 port, one VGA port, an external SCSI, two proprietary ports and a good old modem card. As you can see on the back we have a sticker with the company that owned this system. I think you will find this system more interesting on the inside. Let's take this machine apart. For this operation you need a standard Phillips screwdriver. Please be careful with the screws as they are non-standard. It's best if you can put them somewhere safe. Now all you need to do is to lift the backplate very careful. I can see this system has only ISA cards and is fully populated. The video card has this ID looking connector that connects to the internal monitor. Looks like a standard ID socket, but you shouldn't connect a drive there anyway. Now let's take this machine apart even further. I will take out the PC card so we can have a better look of the motherboard and see if the battery has leaked or not. The first board is the one with the proprietary connectors. As you can see the manufacturer is Alcatel Titan, googling I had found that this company was doing maintenance for Alcatel networks in Europe. The second port is a SCSI controller made by LSI Logic and it's pretty heavy to be honest. Next is the chips video card that has a 52K of memory. But can it run Crysis? Last but not least we have a 56K modem card. Now the 100 MHz Intel 486 is revealed. I think this DX486 was the first 486 CPU to need a fan. Next, remove the screws holding the power supply. To get to the hard disk drive we need to take out at the same time both the power supply and the fixed drive brackets. The next operation is to remove all the connectors from the power supply and the fixed disks. Power supply looks pretty clean. And finally we got to the hard disk drive. Now we can change this with another drive. But first let's check if the battery has leaked or not. Also we have to exchange that with a new one. This type of batteries are near extinction. You either won't find one or it will cost you around $20 as it's industrial grade. As a fix I'm going to use two 3 volt batteries, some tape and velcro. I think this fix should last for at least 5-8 years until the batteries dry out. Now let's go back fixing the hard disk problem. So this hard disk doesn't spin off, it's completely dead. I have two options, either I use an IDE to SD card adapter or another drive. 
I personally love all drives because they sound right and I love the mechanical spin sound. As a replacement I'm going to use this IBM Travel Star hard disk. I hope this PC's BIOS will recognize this drive as the original drive is 100 MB only. It seems like the drive is recognized as a 2GB hard drive instead of 6 but I'm pretty happy with this capacity as well. Now the next step is to put a Windows 95 kit on the drive and to start the install. For this operation I'm going to use a USB to IDE adapter and a Windows XP machine. Just copy paste your Windows 95 install folder on your drive and then you're good to go. Windows 95 needs a minimum 4 MB of RAM. My system has 8 and I'm gonna add another 16 just to make sure Windows will run smooth. Next is the Windows 95 setup under a minute. Enjoy! After a successful Windows 95 install, I can now enjoy some old DOS games. Thank you everyone for watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, thank you.